Have you ever listened to someone share about how they've completely transformed their life and you feel kind of intimidated? Like, I'm having trouble making this one little change in my life. There's no way I could do all of that. Well, you can do more than you think. And Charles Duhigg, in his book, The Power of Habit, says the key is something called keystone habits. Health is Wealth is presented by Meridian Health Services with support from Lifestream Services. Keystone habits start a process that, over time, transforms everything. Notice first that Duhigg's definition says this is a process that takes time. We're not looking for overnight transformation here. But keystone habits start a process that disrupts other habits. How do they do that? Or more importantly, how can you identify keystone habits in your own life to make your own habit changes more effective? I interviewed healthcare experts about some of the diseases and disorders, both mental and physical, that are common here in our community and across the country. I asked each of them for an example of a keystone habit in their area of expertise. And hopefully their examples will give you ideas for your own situation. You'll hear those later in the series. First, let's break down a few of the ways that keystone habits can disrupt other habits. The first is by creating momentum through a concept called small wins. Dr. Anjali Diaz, Associate Professor of Psychological Science at Ball State University, told me three things go into any habit change. Number one, motivation the intention to actually develop this new behavior. Number two, effort, the hard work of repeating that behavior over and over. And number three, time. Habits take time. Um, sometimes the reason that our long-term goals don't come into fruition is because, because we're not experiencing any type of reinforcements or reward along the way. But if you chunk them down into shorter, like shorter term goals, short term things, we're going to be experiencing more of those rewards. And when we experience those rewards, that can keep us motivated to put in the time, to put in the effort that we need. Charles Duhigg defines small wins as, quote, a steady application of a small advantage. By breaking down our big goals, we can start with a keystone habit that's shorter term or more manageable. In other words, more likely to give us a win. This is a concept sometimes called snowballing. Think of rolling a snowball down a big hill. It starts small, but as it goes downhill, it picks up more snow, more inertia, more speed, until it's big enough to flatten anyone that gets in the way. And keystone habits can create small wins in communities, too. Jenna Ashby, director of the 812 Coalition in South Muncie neighborhoods, told me one of her favorite projects they do every year is a program called Small Sparks. It is small micro-grants to neighbors that other neighbors uh, are the ones who look at all of the applications and decide which projects are going to get funded each year. Those neighbors then receive uh, a grant of up to $500 to do whatever they have written their proposal for that improves quality of life in the neighborhood. It's all kinds of projects, but it's really fun to see that short-term success happen and then people, they do believe, okay, if I can make a difference in this small thing, what are the bigger things that I can begin to have influence in? A second way that keystone habits can disrupt other habits is by creating structures that help other positive habits flourish. Abby Gluvna, project manager at Recovery Cafe Muncie, shared with me about her process of recovery from substance use disorder and the underlying trauma of a sexual assault she'd experienced. What an incredibly hard process. Her keystone habit at the very beginning of recovery created a structure that helped other positive habits take root. I pretty much had to start just putting myself first. Um, I had to put my boundaries first. I had to put my feelings first. What was going to help me heal and grow from that situation? 
Um, you know, other people had opinions and suggestions, but if they didn't work for me or if it wasn't, you know, of my interest, then it, I had to like kind of cut that off. So really just putting myself first and choosing myself every day to get better and to let myself feel those things. Cause I knew that as a person who is healing and is starting recovery, you have to almost relive that stuff. Um, so the habit I, I chose was just to put myself first. A third way keystone habits can disrupt other habits is by helping create awareness of cues or rewards we aren't even aware of. Charles Duhigg's concept of the habit loop says any habit has three elements, a cue, a routine, and a reward. Keystone habits can help us become aware of our cues and rewards, and sometimes even the routines themselves. In The Power of Habit, Duhigg gives the example of a study of 1,600 people who were trying to lose weight. Researchers simply asked the participants to keep a food journal, writing down everything they ate in their day. And as that became a habit, participants started to find patterns they didn't even know existed. For example, some of them noticed that they always seemed to eat a snack mid-morning. So they started bringing a piece of fruit to the office to eat when that mid-morning hunger hit. The researchers didn't suggest that, but the keystone habit of food journaling had made them aware of another small routine they could change. Six months into the study, participants who had kept daily food records had lost twice as much weight as those who had not made it into a daily habit. So when you're looking to create healthier habits in your own life and you're trying to identify a keystone habit to start with, look for these three things. Habits that can build momentum through small wins. Habits that can create structures that help other habits flourish. And habits that can create awareness of other habits, their cues, routines, and rewards. But Charles Duhigg also says that dozens of studies show one keystone habit is the single most important keystone habit for individual success. Willpower. There's a sort of experiment you may have seen people post videos of online where a parent sits their young child down in front of a marshmallow. The parent leaves the room with the camera rolling, but first they offer the kid a deal. You can eat the marshmallow right now, or if you wait a few minutes until I get back, you can have two marshmallows. This actually originated in a Stanford experiment that tested the willpower of a group of four-year-olds. About 30% of them managed to wait and got the double treat when the researchers came back in the room. Years later, the researchers tracked down those four-year-olds who were now high schoolers. They found that the ones that were able to delay their gratification at age four now had the best grades, had average SAT scores 200 points higher. They were more popular, and they'd done fewer drugs. If you knew how to avoid the temptation of a marshmallow as a preschooler, that willpower ability would also help you finish your homework or resist peer pressure as you got older. Lisa Rosine, executive director of Recovery Cafe Muncie, gave me a great example of how intentional breathing has helped her build willpower. Just at my desk, in the car, at the bus stop, focusing on my breath for a minute or two, and try to just focus on my breath for a minute or two. Knowing that I took time for myself, I took a few minutes for myself, I did what I said I was gonna do. That builds integrity, that builds self-esteem. I'm doing an esteemable thing. I said I was gonna pay attention to my breath, and I did it. And so this next thing, I think, I think I might exercise. I think I might just do 10 minutes on the Stairmaster. And I did it. Like, there was a time where I would have all these ideas, like, I should, I should, I should, I should. And all these I shoulds, it, it was killing me. Like, I just felt awful about myself because I wasn't actually doing anything. Um, but showing up for one small thing, like taking a breath for a couple minutes, setting the intention to do it, and then doing it, builds this muscle of, I can and I will. I believe in myself. I did it last time, I'll do it again. Lisa is exactly right. Willpower isn't just a skill, it's a muscle. 
by building that willpower muscle little by little, you'll see that strength spill over into other areas of your life. That's what makes willpower an essential keystone habit. If you've got a great keystone habit or if you're just starting one, let us know in the comments. Like and subscribe because we've got more Health is Wealth episodes on the way. In our next episode, I explore why higher healthcare spending doesn't actually make our community healthier. And if you enjoyed learning about Keystone Habits with me, check out The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg to learn even more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.